uh, this is Prajwal and uh, I work with Inmobi as the Director of Product Management. Uh, today is Whiteboard Wednesday. Uh, we'll be talking about multi-touch attribution, uh, its use cases, uh, how marketeers can utilize the same uh, in their campaigns. Uh, before we get into multi-touch attribution, I just want to cover a little bit about performance marketing and how its evolution has been. Um, we look at performance marketing in different ways and what they want to drive is key performance indicators. Uh, one of them uh, we all know is to drive installs. Uh, the system has evolved to not just drive installs but drive an event post installs which is basically maximizing lifetime value or an LTV event for the user. Uh, there are a lot of campaigns which drive transactions, for example the retail use cases. Uh, and then a brand first uh, customer base uh, marketeers who look at driving page views and also thereby increasing the LTV of users they acquire. So in this performance marketing, attribution plays an important role in understanding which of these channels that we talk about drive the best ROI for, for them. Uh, and a marketer in general uses different channels for running their campaigns. Uh, they use search which is one of the most important channels uh, for driving volumes. Uh, of course, they use display, affiliate marketing and uh, retargeting uh, tactics to drive the performance marketing KPIs that we looked at. Uh, in all of this, attribution plays uh, an important role. Uh, and we'll just talk about uh, how attribution has evolved over time. Uh, primarily in performance marketing, people uh, use something called as uh, a single touch attribution model, uh, which basically gives credit to any of these KPIs. Uh, to just one particular touch point and that can be the first touch or the last touch. Uh, so this is actually what a lot of the marketeers use currently. Here's an example where uh, this user here was displayed a bunch of ads on his uh, phone. We're talking about a single use case of app install. Uh, this is his customer journey uh, through a period of let's say 28 days. Uh, he has seen a bunch of uh, ads that uh, have been shown to him by various companies, be it Facebook's View or Inmobi's View, uh, and then clicks by, uh, by various ad networks. Uh, and finally, uh, he doesn't install at this point in time. Now, when you go by single touch attribution and go with the last touch attribution, the credit is probably given to the last click before this particular install app happened. Uh, and that goes to uh, one of the networks that has been mentioned here. Uh, however, uh, in the app install space, the credit is actually given to uh, an install only after the install has been opened by the user, which is basically meaning the, the KPI is not this, but it has moved to something called as an app open, which is when the user opens the app. Now, the credit is kind of shifted from the network here, which drove the click, to a network which actually drove the click after the app was installed. And that's what you see here, right? Uh, now, in a last touch attribution model, this network driving the click before an app open is who gets credit for this app open. If you go the last touch model, if you go the first touch model, the network which is the first view or the first click, in this case, let's say Google search, search click, will get attribution for this entire app open and LTV that, that is driven by this app open. Now, if you're looking at transaction, which is an app event that happens let's say on day 28, none of these touch points matter at all. Uh, the marketeer might have spent uh, a bunch of dollars in actually getting eyeballs from the user and uh, actually making the user go through all of this. But this app event will be actually attributed to the last click that uh, the retargeting network drives. And everything done so far uh, has no value, but all the credit goes to this. Now, there's some flaws with this model, uh, of course, uh, it's recently become more nuanced and, uh, uh, and a lot of people are making use of this. One is, uh, one major flaw of this model is uh, uh, app fraud. If you look at the same diagram here, there's intense incentives to drive multiple clicks assuming that this particular click will somehow become the last touch or first touch uh, and that gets attributed to the, to the KPI that is in mind. Uh, here, what I'm uh, looking or uh, showing you is what's called as ad stacking, uh, where multiple clicks from the same device are triggered off. Uh, there's another uh, type of fraud uh, which is induced in such environment, which is basically called as click site sniping, where uh, just before an event happens, which is the KPI that is measured for, uh, a click is driven, uh, which is this click. 
Uh, it can be a valid click, but a lot of fraudsters figure out that uh, because the attribution is last touch, they kind of inject these clicks so that they get credit for uh, any of the opens or any of the KPIs that the marketeer looks at. Now, uh, so this is this is what single touch is all about. Now, uh, if you have to move this away and then give credit, due credit to the networks that are playing a part in achieving the KPIs, uh, the marketeer has to work with vendors to do multi-touch attribution. What does this mean? If you look at this example itself, there are at least 10 different touch points before any KPI happens. Uh, if you have to give credit equally and distribute the credit to different networks that actually engage with the user, you need to employ something called as a uh, multi-touch attribution model. And why you need to do that is uh, to make sure that you know fraudsters don't uh, get into uh, this model and then you know uh, take credit because they drove the last click. It's the right thing to do as well uh, because you are actually giving credit uh, to networks that actually influence the user. Uh, now, how do you want to give credit is uh, based on the modeling that you will use. Uh, it can be a model where you give equal credit to all the networks. It can be a model uh, that will be uh, driven by data, uh, which says that these are certain networks which have influenced the user, uh, and so I'll give a higher credit to those networks. Uh, now, in moving to multi-touch attribution, these are the few things that any marketer should be aware of. One is you need to pick the right vendor who is able to actually collect all of these data points, which is basically I'm calling out as data collection. It's important to understand different touch points of user, especially when performance marketing is moving to a cross-device environment. It's no more about collecting clicks and uh, impressions on the same device. It's about collection of data points across different devices. Uh, now, the next part is using the right channels, because there are some channels which are incentivized to do fraud. Uh, you should weed them off and the only way to weed them off is figuring out channels that drive incrementality and that goes back to finding the right vendor who can actually work with multi-touch models. Uh, now the modeling itself is another important aspect to multi-touch attribution to figure out which is the right model that you need to use to make sure that you're incentivizing the channels uh, which drive your incremental KPIs that can be installs, that can be revenue, that can be transactions whatever you are actually looking at. Uh, so, uh, I would uh, just want to end the session by calling out these four key important uh, things that a marketer needs to look at uh, 2019 and beyond uh, because performance advertising is moving multi-channel uh, and working on single touch attribution does not solve for all use cases. Thank you. Hi, this is Prajwal and uh, in this edition of Whiteboard Wednesdays, we'll be talking about cross-device attribution. We'll uh, mainly start with what is cross-device attribution, um, why do you as marketers uh, need to utilize cross-device attribution and uh, how you would be using cross-device in your daily marketing campaigns. Uh, let's start with what is cross-device. Uh, uh, in this time and age, every user has multiple devices. Uh, people identity uh, is, is what is becoming really important. Uh, people use uh, phones, tablets, uh, their computers and desktop. Cross-device uh, uh, is, is a capability for identifying multiple devices and attach it to the same user. It's people identity. And cross-device attribution uh, is basically attributing a conversion across multiple devices. Uh, and uh, that's what we mean by cross-device attribution. Um, and now let's get into why you need to use cross-device attribution. Uh, we're just talking about a simple diagram here, which is basic path to purchase for any, for any user. Uh, any user does not uh, transact on, on, uh, on a marketer's website uh, just with one click or uh, with one advertisement. Uh, he goes through a journey and the journey might start with uh, Google search and ends with the retargeting ad. Uh, if you have to uh, decrypt this journey, uh, a marketer can look at three different campaigns that he can run. Upper funnel campaigning, which is mostly video ads. Uh, mid funnel prospecting which is direct response ads on mobile web uh, and finally you know retargeting campaigns that lets users transact in each of these campaigns uh, the eventual conversions happens via different touch points cross device attribution lets you capture all these touch points across devices and lets uh, the, the marketer give credit to all the channels that actually led to this eventual transaction 
Uh, in this particular uh, diagram, we see that uh, the user bought something uh, on a website based on multiple touch points, including search, uh, display ad, tablets, and finally retargeting. And across, you know, tablet, desktop, and mobile. Uh, there are technologies now to connect all of these three, uh, three devices together. Uh, and uh, that's how, when we talk about how, uh, you would be implementing cross-device cross in your campaigns. There are tools out there like Google Analytics, Nielsen, and Newstar, uh, and companies which actually help you understand paths to purchase across devices. Uh, we'll just talk about how cross-device attribution will change uh, how you look at conversions in general. Um, with, with a normal attribution partner or a measurement partner, for a campaign which drives transactions, you'll be looking at uh, let's say about 2,000 uh, conversions here. Um, what uh, you would now with cross-device attribution start looking at uh, is divide the same conversions into 500 which came uh, cross-device and 1,500 that happened on same device. Uh, this 500 that happened cross-device which is a large chunk of your transactions can happen via this tablet. Uh, people who actually interacted with your ads campaigns on mobile and converted in desktop, which is mostly the use case, right? A lot of people interact with ads on mobile and eventually go on desktop. If you, 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 if you, use, uh, if you don't use cross-device, all of these conversions would be uh, lost and not attributed to at all. And that's a big chunk of your marketing spends that are going wasted. Uh, if I was uh, looking at these numbers, I will start spending more on mobile because that is letting me get more conversion on desktops. And that's how you can actually start utilizing cross-device conversions to your advantage. Uh, what we also need to look at it, uh, uh, is, is assist ratios. Uh, what I mean by assist ratios, for example, the assist ratio of two, 2 here would mean that every conversion that happens on mobile will lead to two conversions that the same device assists on desktop. A uh, higher assist ratio uh, basically means that you need to uh, be looking at mobile as a channel uh, deeply. Uh, you also would want to look at how assists are going, basically on what happens on last click, how many conversions are coming here, and how many conversions are coming on assists across these different devices. Uh, you can also see that there are a bunch of assets that are happening on mobile. So with this kind of reporting, you will not only give credit to uh, uh, conversions happening on the same device, but also give credit and start your marketing spends uh, where it matters, where you know you are getting more assists and where people are actually uh, in the upper funnel, mid funnel, interacting with your campaigns. Uh, and that eventually will help your ROI improve. Uh, and that's how you use cross-device attribution on your daily marketing campaigns. Thank you.